What up guys, it's Jay here from TV Time with Jay, and we are back once again with another review for you guys, and this time I am here to review The Mandalorian, Season 2, Episode 1, Chapter 9, The Marshal. Now as per usual with my episode reviews, I'll be recapping the events of the episode, and then going over my thoughts and feels about the different plot points all throughout, so if you haven't seen the episode yet, do yourself a favor, watch the episode first, then come back here and tell me your thoughts and feels in the comments down below, because I will be going into spoiler territory, you have been warned. Okay, so this episode, you know, picks up right where we left off, and the Mando is trying to figure out, you know, more information on other Mandalorians, because obviously he was tasked by the armorer, like the armor smith, to reunite Baby Yoda, aka the child, with its kind. And so, he's like, well, if I can find other Mandalorians... You know, they can help guide me. They can help, you know, get, uh, you know, get me uh, covert passage. I mean, obviously Mandalorians have had to go underground, you know, for such a long time now, especially, you know, during the uh, war times and even in post-war. So, you know, that's probably his best bet to actually reuniting Baby Yoda with its kind. So, he ends up... Uh, meeting up with an informant in this one city. Uh, we don't actually get a name drop. I don't think it's Coruscant, uh, but it does have this kind of gritty cyberpunk feel to it. I did like the look of the city. So he ends up going into uh, this like fight club, uh, you know, esque, you know, establishment where like there's an arena and, you know, obviously a ring in the center and two people trying to kill each other with axes and he meets up with his contact and it's like you know i've heard you know of mandalorians uh tell me their location and i'm willing to pay you and of course you know the sleazy dude is like you know how much you want to bet on it um i'm trying to get in on this action and you know mando's like nah I don't gamble if it's not absolutely necessary. He goes, oh, that's too bad. And he ends up shooting one of the fighters. And so Mando gets blamed for it. Um, he gets jumped. But, of course, we know Mando ain't no pushover. He kicks ass. And then, of course, decides to uh, deal with his uh, contact the hard way. Uh, by, of course torturing him and beating him up a little bit until he squeals and is like all right all right i'll tell you the location of the mandalorian that i know there's one in tatooine i swear and he's like no there's no way because we have been to tatooine before when we uh, you know met the um bo not bounty hunter but oh no she was a bounty hunter the bounty hunter lady uh played by ming na wen in that episode, I believe that took place on Tatooine, um, along with, uh, you know, that one kid who was really trying to make his way in the Bounty Hunters Guild, and he uh, tried to betray Mando. It was that episode. Um, and he's like, yeah, I've spent a lot of time on Tatooine. I've never seen another Mandalorian. You're lying to me. He goes, no, 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 I'm telling you the truth. There is a Tatooine um, on a Mandalorian. It, it's in uh, Espalco. He's like, what the heck is Espalco? It's like, I've never seen that on the map because trust me, it's there. I'm telling you the truth. Now please, give me your word that you're not going to kill me. And he goes, you have my word that you will not die by my hand. And so, you know, he leaves him tied up to this lamppost. He goes, Mando, you can't just leave me like this. Cut me down! And Mando's just like, that wasn't part of the deal. And he shoots out the lights of the lamppost, and so these, you know, rabid creatures, now that they see the darkness, uh, go and uh, devour this dude. Mando continues to just be a great A badass. So, of course, Mando and Baby Yoda head off to Tatooine. And uh, they get greeted by the repair lady. And, you know, the mechanic chick is like, 
Oh, thank God. Thank the force. I'm so glad this little thing is all right. It had me worried sick. Because, of course, you know, she's in love with Baby Yoda, as we all are. Um, and uh, you actually see, you know, a bit of character development from Mando. Because, you know, at first the mechanic is like, hey, get away from there. You know he doesn't like droids. And he's like, no, 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 go ahead. Let him have it. Uh, the crest could use a once over anyway. He goes, she goes, well, you heard the man. Go ahead and do it. Um, so he, of course, ask her about uh, Mas Palco, and she's like, haven't heard that name in a while. Uh, it's an abandoned uh, mining settlement. You know, it was taken over by bandits a while back. So, uh, you know, I haven't even really gone there. I mean, you could check it out. So she gives him basically the general location of where it used to be uh, and lets Mando borrow her speeder bike. He rides out, he gets to the town, and of course, Where's the best place to uh, find a Mandalorian? Why, none other than a wretched hive of scum and villainy. And by that, I mean a cantina slash bar. So, he asks the bartender, he goes, you know, I'm looking for another Mandalorian. He goes, well, what do you mean? Someone who looks like me. And he goes, oh, you mean the Marshal? And so, uh, this is when we're introduced to the Marshal, played by the man, the myth, the legend, Timothy Oliphant. Now, a lot of people know Timothy Oliphant for his comedy nowadays, because he's really funny. He's played a lot of comedic roles recently. But, uh, you know, the breakout role for him where I first noticed him was the show Justified, where he was a badass U.S. Marshal. So I was like, oh, he is right at home with this. And we do see that the Marshal is decked out in Mandalorian armor. But not just any Mandalorian armor, a very familiar set of Mandalorian armor. A little something like this. That's right. The Marshal was decked out and damaged... Boba Fett armor. And he says that he bought it off of some Jawas, which makes a lot of sense. You know, Jawas, of course, would check the Sarlacc pit and they found the piece of the armor. That's not all, because at the end of the episode, when Mando is leaving Tatooine, we actually see a bald dude kind of lurking in the sand of Tatooine and some music starts to play. Now, if you are familiar with Star Wars character themes, you know exactly who that character is. And indeed, you go check IMDB, and that bald dude is credited as Boba Fett. So, the Fett is back, baby. I am so excited for this. Now, of course, Mando, being a devout follower of the Creed, is like, that armor doesn't belong to you, give it back to me. And he goes, I don't know, I'm quite fond of this armor, it's uh, protected me pretty well, I don't know. And he's like, alright, we're gonna have to do this the hard way then. And so they're about ready to, you know, have a good old fashioned standoff in the bar, when shit starts to go down like it almost seems like an earthquake and you're just like what the fuck is going on and then all of a sudden a fucking crate dragon appears a crate dragon now if you are a star wars fan which i'm assuming you are since you're watching the mandalorian or you could just be a casual fan so you might not know a crate dragon is a massive sand creature native to Tatooine that is even bigger than the Rancor, the famous, you know, creatures that were in Return of the Jedi, and it's bigger than a Sarlacc, which is, of course, the creature that was in the Sarlacc pit in Return of the Jedi. So, that gives you a little bit of a hint to, you know, the scale of this creature and you know mando 
being as resourceful and smart as he is, knows that there is a particular culture in Tatooine that specializes in hunting crate dragons. And that is, of course, the Tusken Raiders, a.k.a. Sand People. Now, fun little lore dive for you guys. Um, crate dragons are actually, you know, hunted by Tusken Raiders as kind of a rite of passage, right? Like, uh, they take their, you know, young men out on their first hunt and they're supposed to, you know, get a kill and, like, harvest a part of the crate dragon to kind of use as, like, you know, a trophy or, like, part of their armor or set or whatever like that. And uh, there have actually been two famous... Tusken Raider Jedi, uh, one being the retired Jedi uh, Sherat Het, and then the second being his son, Asherat Het. Asherat Het uh, actually served during the Clone Wars and worked alongside Anakin Skywalker, um, and of course Anakin, you know, had immediate mistrust towards him because. His mother was murdered by Tusken Raiders. But eventually, like, uh, they squashed their beef. Uh, and if you're familiar with the uh, Legends continuity, um, in particular the comic books, Asherat Het actually ends up surviving way past the Clone Wars into the time of Star Wars Legacy and returns not as Asherat Het. But as Darth Crate. Yes, Darth Crate as in Crate Dragon. Love that. Oh my god, it's so cool. But anyway, so Timothy Oliphant's character, the Marshal, is like, all right, you know what? I'll give you back the armor, but you've got to help me take this thing out because it's terrorizing our town, and eventually, you know, it's going to stop settling for eating banthas and go after my people. I'm fond of this town more so than my armor. I'm willing to give it up if you can help save the town. And Mando's like, okay, that's fair. No, we can't do this alone. I'm going to need the help of your village, and you're going to need to swallow your pride and work alongside the Tusken Raiders. Now, Mando ends up you know, brokering a truce between you know the Marshal's people and the Tuscan tribe. And so they work together to take down the Crate Dragon. And that battle was epic. Oh my god. Like right from the start, I love the effects. The Crate Dragon looked menacing and just so awesome. And of course, Mando gets the finishing blow by going full on like Jonah Pinocchio with it. And, um, you know, getting swallowed on purpose by the crate dragon so that he could plant the bomb, you know, get out of the jaws and then detonate it within the crate dragon, you know, giving everybody the dub. And of course, you know, the Tuscans, they, um, you know, open up the crate dragon, um, basically harvest it for its meat and its parts. Um, and now the rest of the town is safe and has. No worries about being raided by the Tuscans because they've made a truce. As long as they can, uh, you know, have the parts of the crate dragon, they will never raise another blaster at one of their people unless one of the um, townspeople raises a piece at them first. So this was dope. Uh, once again, just a great adventure. Um, I love seeing, you know, different angles of uh, familiar planets that we all know and love from the Star Wars franchise. And crate Dragons are one of my favorite, like, monster creatures from the Star Wars universe. So, this was really well done. Uh, hats off to Jon Favreau for writing and directing this one. I absolutely loved it. But let me know what you guys thought about this episode in the comments down below. As always, don't forget to leave this video a like to let me know you enjoyed it. And if you like what I do here and you want to see more from me, be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. I'll be reviewing The Mandalorian every single Friday when it comes out. 
So if you want more Mandalorian reviews, more Mandalorian content, like I said, be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. In the outro card, I will leave linked uh, the podcast episode I did last year with my good buddy Brian, uh, where we discussed our feelings on The Mandalorian Season 1. And then I will also leave linked a video YouTube's mysterious algorithm things you might like, which I hope you do. But until next time, guys, this is Jay from TV Time with Jay, and I'll catch you in the next review. Until then, may the force be with you. Peace.